in this segment to talk about triage of the chest pain patient in the emergency department. So when a chest pain patient comes to your triage desk in the emergency department, or for my EMS providers, when you go out on a chest pain call, what you're thinking always is heart attack. You're going to go down that cardiac uh, pathway first. You're going to think that, uh, about acute coronary syndrome and such. Now for these patients, that first minute that they arrive at your triage desk is crucial in terms of getting them into the system, get them, getting them evaluated, finding out if they are indeed having a myocardial infarction, and getting them over to the cath lab. In our facility, our typical response to anyone coming to the triage desk and saying, I'm having some chest pain, that registrar is going to get their name and date of birth and get them registered. The triage nurse is going to get them in a wheelchair, get them directly to a room. Uh, they're going to uh, page out to the whole staff that we have a chest pain patient. We need to get an EKG and a nurse. And that triage nurse stays with the patient in the room until a primary nurse can come in and be available to be their main nurse. Now we're going to start that hunt for the heart attack. We're going to start with a 12 lead EKG and get them all hooked up to that spaghetti of wires there and take a look. Uh, and what you're going to end up with is, all that, is your typical 12 lead EKG like this. Uh, and that EKG machine has a semester of cardiology packed into it. So it's going to tell you uh, if that person's having a hot MI or not. But of course, uh, if you're a savvy nurse or your provider is also going to uh, proofread that, what we're looking for is any signs of ST elevation in three or more continuous leads there. Uh, so in most uh, normal EKGs, you have your P wave, your QRS, and your T wave. In the ST segment, we're looking for elevations like we have on these lower segments here. And those ST elevations will uh, clue us in that person is having a heart attack, and we need to get them to the cath lab to get that uh, blockage punched up and get them open. Here's what's going on. Uh, somewhere in the heart, there's a section of the heart that's losing blood supply, losing the oxygen, and that muscle, that heart muscle there is actually dying off, and we've got to get that punched open. Uh, the usual wisdom is that time is muscle, and that was kind of a theoretical construct. Here's a study from some Italian researchers that actually studied the extent of myocardial damage in an MI uh, using contrast MRI to really quantify this and get us some really objective data. And this is the path not only of uh, necrosis in the tissue over the evolution of the MI, and this is the first hour and over three or four hours, you can see the damage evolves pretty quickly. And that's muscle that dies off and isn't retrievable. In addition, they looked at the my, uh, really micro uh, uh, vascular uh, damage, damage to the really small vessels that might, if we do salvage this muscle, give us a little collateral circulation once we uh, recover this patient. And that also is dying off. So we really need to get these folks treated really quickly. I teach uh, here in Nebraska. Here in Nebraska, here in my facility, I have the uh, luxury of a cath lab that's 50 yards down the hall. We can get them down there and our times are pretty quick. I also lecture to a lot of rural nurses and their cath lab is typically 50 miles or 150 miles down the road. So it's a real disconnect. I always have to kind of play to both audiences there. Uh, but the main thing to really get things rolling is to get that EKG. The American Heart Association, uh, their standard is a 10 minute door to EKG time. Uh, if you can do that, you can really get the ball rolling. Now here's the January issue, the Journal of Emergency Nursing here. Just got this uh, a few weeks ago. There's a study in here where they looked at some a couple of rural hospitals and checked their initial EKG times on newly arriving patients with coronary symptoms. And what they found was 59% of them, uh, only 59%, were getting EKGs within the f that first uh, 10 minutes of arrival. And their mean time is 43 minutes. Now when I had something published here in the journal, all of my coworkers and my managers said, great, fantastic, what's that about? If I had told them, well, it's a study that shows that we're nowhere near reaching our benchmarks according to the American Heart Association, that would have been kind of an uncomfortable silence. Uh, but uh, fortunately, that's not us. That's some other hospital. Here, we're doing very well. Uh, old school, the way it was a few years ago, only our respiratory therapists were trained to do the 12 lead. So we got a, a, someone with chest pain, and we'd page them. It would be maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, page them again. Stat means now, please. Um, and they would get down there. We, then we trained all of our ER techs in the uh, 12 lead. 
Uh, we also would give them a designated EKG pager, which really nobody wanted. Typically, we're getting six to eight minutes door to EKG time. Now, uh, in March of 2009, we trained all the RNs in 12 lead two. Now our times are down to one to two minutes. Typically, our registrar is putting in their name, date, and birth and getting them into the system as we're getting the EKG. So sometimes our charting shows a time stamp on the EKG that's before their designated arrival time. So uh, everyone's doing the best thing they can do. Now this is kind of a quality measure internally for our ER and for nursing. Uh, also, the CMS folks, the folks who do Medicare reimbursement, look at that and it's tied to our reimbursement. And then also our annual pay increases as nurses are tied to this quality indicator. So for this reason, when a patient comes in and we page out that EKG and chest pain needed now, that patient gets the NASCAR pit root car routine. Everyone piles into that room. You have one nurse or one tech hooking them up to the EKG, one putting their information into the, uh, the 12 lead machine. IVs going, monitors, oxygen, just like that. Everyone's running around and getting it taken care of. Hi, if you liked what you heard here, I'm available to teach at your nursing conference, your EMS symposium, your fire department, your hospital, anywhere where healthcare professionals need continuing ed hours. My name is Curtis Olson. I'm an ER nurse and educator, and you can reach me at nursecurtis at windstream.net. E email me, and I can send you a copy of my available lectures, any other details you need. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.